could you give us a, a, a snapshot of your role in the medical travel industry, please? Well, certainly. Uh, my company's role in the medical travel sector has been to answer the question, if you build it, will they come? And to provide strategic marketing, market research, and consultancy in the area of markets. Where are the best markets? Where are the opportunities? And where are the places from which uh, you're most likely to find the patients that you want? And what, what are the major challenges for healthcare providers in the sector today? Well, they're, they are enormous. The challenges in the local markets have to do with supply and demand. And the challenges in the international markets uh, are even more complicated than that because you get into issues of culture, you get into issues of travel, you get into issues of public misunderstandings about uh, health care and about health care as a privilege or as a right. You get into issues of uh, local supply and will foreign consumers take away uh, from our local supply in a particular marketplace area? So there's a, an array, a very uh, complex array of issues that can be either motivators or inhibitors. And our role as market planners and researchers is to dig into those issues and to provide cogent and, I hope, coherent answers. Can you describe some of the common mistakes you see when it comes to companies setting a strategy? Uh, absolutely. That The first mistake is not having a strategy. Uh, there are traditionally a set of uh, five domains that constitute strategy. And the first of those, of course, is an economic model. That is to say, how much capital needs to be invested, uh, how much operating costs will be incurred before a break-even point? Where is the break-even point? At what point in time will we reach that break-even point? It's stunning, Ian, how infrequently uh, providers who intend to develop an international medical travel business, it's stunning how infrequently they sit down and actually work hard to answer those questions and of course they are pivotal. Why do you think that is? There's a rush to seize upon the perceived opportunity of international medical travel and in that headlong rush there is a fear of being left behind. That's the first. The second is a fundamental disconnect between the interested parties and the investors. Very often the investors want to build a fancy new hospital and the providers, who are they to say no? They're going to, of course, carpe the diem and accept the enthusiastic participation of investors. Um, I have a very clear image of sitting in an absolutely beautiful hospital in Medellin, Colombia that was absolutely empty and had been for since since it first opened its doors a year and a half before we watched it being built we attempted to advise the investors and the local board uh, against it it was built anyhow and I sat with the executive director who was almost in tears saying where are the patients well they're not coming and it's not likely that they will be coming in the kinds of numbers required to reach a break even at an operation such as that. Okay and finally why should people come to the IMTJ summit in London this April? Well the IMTJ summit offers an opportunity for delegates and sponsors to avoid the boosterism and the pom-poms and the ridiculous hyperbole that's been associated with the sector and to dig into the facts and to find some solid, reliable information about the sector and to mingle with people who have their heads screwed on straight, frankly, about the sector, uh, separating fact from what is often 
uh, fic- fiction about the sector. 